Welcome back to the channel guys, Mule Fabrication. Uh, last video we watched as I finished fitting up the hot side turbo setup. I haven't fully welded it. We are gonna do that later once this is back into teardown mode. Um, but the next step is we are going to fit up and build the whole cold side with you guys. You guys just saw the last half of fitting up the hot side because I started this YouTube thing after I started building it. So I will show you what we have for... So when it comes to building this cold side like this with getting all the parts, you can only do so much guessing with the tape measure on the truck. So we kind of order the main fittings you need and then a bunch of miscellaneous clamps and bends and then we'll make work and cut and weld what we need to on the way. So one of the first things we got here is it's a Turbo Smart Race Port blow off valve. You need one of those. It's expensive if you don't have one of it. Uh, it'll blow your whole motor up. And here we got a flange and clamp. This uh, is a B-band that goes right on the turbo. And here we have just two standard aluminum three-inch V-band clamps. That's a clamp for the turbo side. Uh, other thing we have here is a 92 millimeter cable-driven throttle body. Uh, this truck, this LS originally came with uh, drive-by wire, but I prefer cable. It's uh, a little easier with the uh, gas pedal and just simplicity. You're not relying on the computer with lag and tuning that also. It's all right there. Got that from Jags. And then I got Amazon. I ordered a kit of three inch aluminum bends. Bunch of just miscellaneous, there's U-bends, there's 90s, there's 45s, there's some straight pieces. And then also it came with a bunch of rubber um, connectors to it. So we'll be combining a little bit of the rubber and the V-band clamps because we do still need some flexibility between the chassis and the engine. And I have a uh, intercooler here mocked up in the front. So we got to build tabs for that to mount that permanently. And then we'll have to put the intake on the engine with the new throttle body so we know exactly where we need to land with those tubes. So we will start with putting the intake on. We will be mounting the intercooler solid first. And then we will be working on making all the connections to go from the turbo through the intercooler, out the other side, back wrapped around into the intake. So let's get going on the intake. We'll just be bolting it on temporarily for measurement purposes and let's go. So I'm still gonna be running the stock truck uh, intake. Uh, I have plenty of clearance in the hood to make it work. And the reason is, is that for one, it's free because it came with the engine. And two, uh, you get a lot more power out of these than a lot of them fabricated aftermarket ones. Um, a lot of people put the fabricated ones on because uh, hood clearance issues and because they look pretty. But I am just going to be using that. So we'll take this off. We'll get the new throttle body put on. And then we will work on putting this onto the truck. New throttle body came with new hardware. These look like they're studs, which might be kind of a pain in the butt to get out. But we'll see. And this is the old drive-by-wire system here.
Oh, look at that. Look at all that nice oil in there. I don't know if you can see that or not. One thing about these is you always got to put a catch, catch can on these when you're doing it because GM runs the PVC stuff right back into the intake just to reburn it. So that'll be a good cleaning before we do anything with that. Get these studs out. I'm right, screwing the threads up. I'm taking them out. Looks like they got a nice little like torques on there if you're going to take them out without. Without having to wreck them, you use like a reverse Torx, maybe even a 12 point socket. But we don't care about that. Oil these things. Set in the toolbox for a while. Yes, I know that's an old seal, but this is still all bolt up for fit up purposes. So when we do a full teardown, I will be replacing that. Builds take a lot of time, a lot of time, and a lot of money. Some of you don't have a lot of time and a lot of money. They take longer than you hope. Doesn't mean you still can't get them done, though. And this is not an expensive throttle body either. This is just one I got off Jegs. Um, running the same one on my Hero Rock Crawler. Um, I had good luck with it on there, so that's why I bought another one. All right, let's get this intake on the truck. Wheel and tire over here to be my stick. Step stool. I'm not super tall. I can't reach up in there. Oh, oh yeah, much better. I had to have these rags shoved in here. Keep dirt and stuff out of the intake, which they're dropping bolts in there. But even though I'm going to be taking this motor all the way apart after everything's fit up. Still not tall enough to reach in here. Ugh. Idea for this truck was building it low and wide. Still have trouble getting up underneath the hood. I can hear something sloshing around in there. I don't know if that's fuel or if that's uh, oil in the intake. I bolt it down and then we can start making some measurements. So when I'm building stuff like this, I like to start with the solid point. This outlet of the turbo is the solid point. Intercooler in the grill can be moved and shifted a little bit. So that's where I like to start. It's a solid point that's not gonna move because we know that's that's not gonna change. But we can always change the location or the position of the intercooler. So we'll start with the piping here. We'll put this, bolt this flange on and then we will figure out where we're gonna come through on this header panel here for the front to curve into 
the inner cooler. So let's put this on here. There is a little rubber gasket that goes here, but I'm not going to put that on for mock-up purposes because I don't want to wreck it yet. little ridges on that so you can uh, make sure that the male and the female end fit in so it's centered. You don't want to try tightening this down if it's not. Roll over one of those edges. Oh, that's the other thing in this wheel wall I got to be cautious of is tire clearance. I want to keep this truck nice and low for the turning radius here, so I might have to come up and in that way, but we'll get a tire in here and check clearances also for this fit up process. That would really suck to build it and then all of a sudden you got to limit your steering radius or have to have a truck sit higher than what you want. So, the main reason we do all this fit up work before versus just building everything and putting it in once. It takes longer, but if you're trying to do, do it one time and do it the right time, that's what you gotta do. And I've had this truck since I was 17. I'm almost 30, so this is what, uh, this is what I want. It's gonna be perfect. Even if it takes me three more years to finish this truck. guys the baby monitor is going off so I will have to continue this uh, hopefully in her afternoon nap perks of uh, trying to build a truck during your kids nap time all right guys we're back from nap time she is daughter is taking her afternoon nap now so I got these tires bolted up because I am good checking clearances here um, this is where inlet's coming out of the turbo. And I do have to trim these little corners of the fenders up more to make sure it's clearance. Because this is hopefully what ride height will be um, when I'm done. Maybe a little inch higher of ride height. Um, but I'm going to trim this stuff up a little bit so I can get full lock to lock steering out of this thing. So I can make sure that I have clearance with the turbo piping. Yeah, you can see here, this is what I have up for my steering setup. Pretty simple se setup. And then I have, this is a three link with a track bar. So all this is still all tacked up. And eventually I'll end up having four eyes up front, right in there, just like the Hero Jeep. I've had really good luck with the RIs. You can set them however you want with your tuning. And so yeah, let's get some trim in. I gotta cut looks like just a little bit here. And just a little bit on this bottom corner. So there we go, we got all the clearance we need. That's locked. Steering is locked over this way. See clearance there. And then there's the inlet. So we got plenty of room. So this nice square hole here. I don't remember what used to be bolted there. 
but I think I am going to make that hole a little bit bigger and run this three inch right up into here, right into the intercooler. So we are gonna cut that section out and start laying some pipe in there. Well, I guess hole sawing it out and making nice cuts, make a nice round hole, it's kind of a waste of time because I ended up having to cut out a lot more than I was thinking to get that elbow to slide through, but I will show you what I got going now. So, I had to cut out a lot bigger of a hole here just to get this elbow to swoop in because of the inside of that. But it should swoop in just like that. <clears throat> And then on the front side here, there's the edge, end of the intercooler right there. It'll come right down below there behind the first headlight. And looks like I just got to drop the intercooler down just a little bit, which I can by trimming that tab. And then I'll just have to verify that lowering that down and trimming that tab off is going to fit with the grill. But I think that will work perfect. I will be able to, if this is up here like this, we'll cut it and turn it down right into where that is. Let's keep going. All right, I am going to test this grill out here. Make sure if I lower this intercooler that everything is going to fit behind this grill because I love the look of these these grills and I do not want to have to cut this apart this is a 79 but I uh, swapped this grill and headlight assembly out of a 77 truck uh, see that's where my problem is see that little tab there the intercooler is hitting that and that's what mounts this grill your cooler is even got to go a little forward. Could be that this is just a little. That bolts right in there. That sucks. I could shorten that tab. Bring it forward or just delete it all together. Yeah, that's what I have to do. I'm going to have to cut that tab. Shorten it. That intercooler dropped down just a little bit more. Forget how good these things look though. Once you got the drill up front like this. These old trucks are so sexy. If they had made the new uh, Jeep pickups, the Gladiators, to look more like this, I think they probably would have sold a lot more of them. So, I have gotten this intercooler bolted down at the bottom. So I know it's location. I still gotta build brackets to go up to here. And I got that 90 on the rubber boot there. And it comes out right there. So now I'm just gonna be going back and forth with some of these bends to try to go from the turbo here up into here with uh, maybe a combo of a V-band clamp and a combo of a rubber so we can have it some flexibility in there for when the motor 
twists and tr chassis twists. So I'm gonna be going back and forth, back and forth, trying to make cuts and fit it up and let's get going. TIG welder set up for aluminum. We're going to start tacking this piece together that I, I like where it's sitting and we'll try it on and we'll make the next piece. See how this Chinese aluminum weld I expected this Chinese aluminum looks like dog shit. So we are gonna have to try to clean it off. Let me clean some of that coating off. Well, the welder ain't cooperating with us uh, tonight. I am figured out I am very low on gas. Um, still getting some out of the tank, but sometimes the bottom of the tank. Um, it's not as good, um, but this is what I was running into. So you can see just nasty, um, porosity, like the gas isn't doing its job. I'm having pr plenty of gas flow, but there is, says my tank only has a hundred pounds left in it. So I thought it was the cheap Chinese aluminum, but I went and got a good piece of aluminum that I've welded on before, which turns out good. And it's doing the same thing. So, that's going to be at the end of this video. Uh, please like and subscribe. I'm going to get my gas refilled and then we will continue this build. Uh, and we will get this thing done. Hopefully, the next video, it will be all completed all the way around with the wastegate and everything set up and fully welded. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.